We have a lot to go over, so let's jump right into it. In this video, I'm gonna give you my seven best tips to get better at subharmonic singing. Number one, use a tuner. This is by far my best advice, especially for beginners. After I did that video about how to get your first subharmonic note in under 12 minutes, I got a lot of comments of people saying, hey Mark, I just can't tell. Am I doing a vocal fry or am I actually doing a subharmonic note? And my best advice is, use a tuner. To use an analogy, and I like to use a lot of analogies, the difference between a vocal fry and a subharmonic note is the same difference in a sense between talking and singing. If I'm using a tune, I go, I walk down the street. Well, is there really a tone to that? I mean, you could argue, I guess, in some ways, yes, but not really. However, if I'm singing and I'm like, I walked down or whatever, like, <laughs> I don't know why that got kind of like country-ish, but if I was singing, the tuner would actually pick up those notes. And in the beginning, when I was working on my subharmonic singing, I found specifically that with a tuner, with a line that shows you how sharp or flat you are, it'd be zigzagging when I was kind of halfway-ish between the fry and the subharmonic, but the more I got better at subharmonics, the more that line would be more of a steady, exact note. I wanted to start with this because this is my favorite pro tip because one, if you're using a tuner, you can actually see, am I actually producing a note? If you're not, the tune will be all over the place, not only with a sharp and flat range, but also the notes itself will be all over the place. And two, as you can imagine, the better you get at subharmonic singing, the more you can use a tuner to see, okay, how in tune am I and do I need to adjust my pitch? Speaking of that, number two is adjusting the pitch. Now, once you have the subharmonic note, of course, you're not just gonna do a straight note shot. Typically, people like to sing in subharmonics, hence the term subharmonic singing. There's two huge pro tips I have. One, and Jeff talked about this in his tutorial about how to sing low, is you would do scales in the vocal fry. The lower your vocal fry is, the lower you can sing in terms of the subharmonic register. My vocal coach years ago used to have me do this up and down the scale to work across my break, working on connecting my, my head voice and full, uh, to my full voice. But the reason why this is an important technique to have is because I find that the lower you can vocal fry, the lower you can sing. So a big pro tip, you can even do this as a warm up, is if you're doing a fry like, wow, try to go up and then down. So try to do this thing where you're just in the pitch, almost like a sine wave, so to speak. And then once you get that down, try to do the same in subharmonic singing. In the beginning, even just going from like say, and I'm making this up, like an F to an F sharp might seem impossible. Like the second you try to pitch up, you immediately slip out of the subharmonic or when you try to pitch down, you slip out of it. But the more you do this, the better you'll get at staying in subharmonics while still adjusting your pitch. Number three, jump into it. This is gonna make you a lot better if you practice this. What I'm talking about is when a lot of people practice and start with subharmonic singing, they usually pick a note and then go to the subharmonic, right? And I mentioned this in my video about how to sing your first subharmonic note. So it sounds something like E. So the idea is you're starting at a note because it helps kind of set up for the subharmonic. And as you can imagine, that's a little bit easier in my opinion to start at an actual normal, if I put that in quotation marks, a normal note and then go into the subharmonic as opposed to just jumping right into the subharmonic. So as opposed to going like E. Just go straight into it. So in the beginning, it's gonna seem impossible. It might seem super tricky because you're like, oh wow, it's actually harder than I expected to just jump right into the subharmonic note. But as you can imagine, once you get better at this, you can just jump right in to the subharmonic register without any buildup. Number four, relax more. This is pretty straightforward and pretty self-explanatory. And to use a unique analogy, I look at normal singing as almost doing like squatting, right? Where you're like, oh, and you're like, you know, you, you sometimes tense up and you're like really trying to get that note out and sing lower or whatever. That's the way I look at low bass singing is very similar to like doing like a bunch of squats. However, to use that same squatting analogy, I look at subharmonic singing is if you're on a rail, for example, and you're just balancing. So you're not really trying to lift up a ton of weight or whatever, you're more just trying to balance. And as you can imagine, if you're trying to balance, the more you try to strain, the less better off you're gonna be, as was just relaxing and chilling. And if anything, when it comes to subharmonics, in the beginning, I noticed that I tried to like really straight. So I'd be like, oh. But I noticed that the more I relaxed, especially once I got into that subharmonic, once I got more relaxed, it allowed me to then go even lower. So as opposed to being like, oh, or whatever, I go like, oh. 
Of course, you don't want to relax too much because you might slip back into the fry, but that is something to keep in mind that I find when it comes to going lower and when it comes to getting a better subharmonic, it's almost counterintuitive that the more you relax, sometimes even the louder you'll be and the better your subharmonic will be. Number five, notes then lyrics. This is more of an intermediate technique. So let's say you've been doing it for a while, you could sing subharmonics. A big pro tip I have, if let's say you wanna start doing actual subharmonic singing in terms of you singing lyrics and melodies with your voice, I suggest doing the notes first and then focus on the lyrics. This also works for regular singing. So let's say I'm trying to do a melody that I'm like, I walk down. Like, just like that. I don't know why I'm snapping to you. But like, so let's say I have that. Let's say I'm trying to sing that as best I can. Well, instead of trying to sing the melodies, which forces you to use your armature in a very specific way, just do the notes first. So like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Almost think of it like scatting, right, from jazz. Practice that a lot more. So like, oh, whoa, whoa. Then start with one word. So I, whoa, whoa. And what's good about this is you're now focusing mainly on producing the melody first and then adding in the lyrics. Because as you can imagine, once you add in the lyrics, your armature, your mouth is going to change. Another thing is you have to remember the lyrics. Like I, wait, what did I do again? Like, what was it? What are the lyrics again? And now you have to focus not only on subharmonic singing in terms of producing the actual notes, but if you think about the armature of your mouth and the actual words, of course you don't want to forget the lyrics. And this is a good way to kind of baby step into full on subharmonic singing. Number six, record. This if anything is probably like the most cliche advice for almost any discipline period, whether it's fitness related or singing or music or art, entertainment, whatever. And that is record yourself performing. Now, I'm gonna be honest, as I like to be very transparent in all my videos, I found this didn't really help me. If, if you want me to be honest, like I record myself doing subharmonic singing and after I look back on it, I'm like, all right, that was kind of good or kind of bad or whatever. And it was interesting to listen to myself after singing it, because you're almost viewing yourself in third person, but I found it personally didn't really help me get any better. However, everybody's different. Maybe by listening to yourself singing subharmonics, you're like, all right, I thought I was singing a subharmonic, but it actually was more of a fry. Now that I'm hearing it, you know, and, and seeing it in third person or hearing it in third person, I'm gonna keep trying. Again, everybody is different. This personally didn't help me, but it might help you. And last, but definitely not least, number seven, practice, practice, practice. I'm gonna give probably the weirdest analogy I've ever given maybe on any video, but I feel like this is the best way I can explain it. Because when I first got into subharmonic singing, I couldn't tell. Am I frying or subharmonic singing, right? You really don't know. It's, it's really tricky, especially in the beginning. And like I said, that is my most common question I get. How do I know if I'm frying or subharmonic singing? And ironically, when it comes to subharmonic singing, I feel like you only know that you're in a subharmonic until you slip out of it. And so when you slip out of it, then you're like, oh, wait, I actually was doing it. And to use an analogy, again, this is the, the weirdest analogy ever. This is the only way I could come up with. Let's say you go out, you have a crazy time with friends. Let's say there's a big event, you're having you know a lot to drink and you wake up the next day and you're like, wow, I didn't realize how much I had to drink. I didn't realize how inebriated I was until I wasn't. And likewise, that's the way in an odd way I look at subharmonic singing is as you can imagine, like anything, the more you practice, the better you get. That's very cliche, that's that's true for anything. But specifically for subharmonic singing, I could only tell I was actually doing it when I wasn't. I could only tell like, oh wait, that actually was a subharmonic note until I slipped out into the fry. And the more that you do this, the more you'll actually recognize, oh, I am singing a subharmonic while you're singing it, whether it's the feel of the note as you're producing it, whether it's the sound or a combination of both, you'll get better at being like, okay, I know for the past 10 times when I slipped out of the subharmonic, now I can actually tell before I slip out that I'm actually in the subharmonic. And like anything, the more that you do this, the better you'll get.